we can break the world down into sort of three classes of, um, of material. And those are, in no particular order, uh, metals, ceramics, and polymers. Okay. So metals, um, let's see, metals, it, we'll start with maybe some, some examples, how's that? So some examples. Um, iron. Oh, let's look around here. Okay, so my, my iron ring, stainless steel, it's mostly iron. It's got some chromium, nickel, some other things in it. Um, I'll write that down. Chromium, okay. Um, brass. Um, I mean, brass is not an element, but uh, copper, zinc, those. And aluminum, say. So there's a few examples. Not that you need to memorize them, but there's some examples of metals. <clears throat> They're held together by metallic bonds. Okay, and we're going to explore what those are soon uh, or, or shortly, but uh, you don't need to know exactly what that is later. What we'll do is we'll start with a simple look and then eventually we're going to get to this thing called the, the band theory, which is really pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, with band theory, we can explain electrical properties, we can get into semiconductors, talk about optical properties. It's really, really very ver uh, versatile. Um, and that's sort of our, our best current model of the bonding in, in metals. Uh, ceramics, let's look at a few ceramics. Um, you know, say something like porcelain. Okay, that's a ceramic. Um, concrete is a ceramic. And there's others like some advanced ceramics. Um, etc. Right? And ceramics are largely held together by ionic bonds. Ceramics are kind of a funny group. Uh, it's a little difficult sometimes to describe them. Uh, if you wanted to you know describe a material property, well ceramics, you know ceramics will shatter. Um, right, and, and a more technical term to describe that is that ceramics are brittle. Okay, they're brittle. Brittle. Um, all right, uh, what about polymers? So polymers, the, the general public actually usually calls these plastics. But as we go, we're going to realize that the word plastic actually is describing a, a mechanical behavior not a type of material. Um, and in fact, not all polymers are plastic. Uh, but some examples um, of polymers would be, uh, say, Teflon. Okay, that's a trade name, better watch out. And, um, you know, uh, Gore-Tex. Actually, they're chemically the same, those two, incidentally. Um, some more common ones, polypropylene, uh, polyethylene. You know, a lot of textiles, a lot of very important materials all around us. Um, the things I'm looking at you through here, these are uh, essentially chemically, they're plexiglass, these glasses I wear. Um, so most of these are made from polymethyl methacrylate. Um, and just a few examples uh, that uh, come to mind. Um, what type of bond is found in a polymer? Well, polymers tend to be, well, in fact, they are. Um, covalent. I, I say tend to be because actually we'll find later that a lot of the properties of polymers come not from the covalent bonds but from these secondary or, or weaker bonds. But we're going to learn about those later. So for now I just wanted to describe metal, ceramics, and polymers. Um, I could add one thing that sometimes helps. Um, for, for ceramics, yeah, they're, they're, they're brittle. They're often, although not not always metal oxides. Okay, a lot of our ceramics are metal oxides, but they're not always. So I don't want you to think they always have to be. So then the last thing I want to address is, um, you know, is is this classification scheme 
thorough? Uh, is it all encompassing? Is it exhaustive? And the short answer is no. There, there's certainly exceptions, aren't there? There's exceptions. And you might be able to think of some. Um, <laughs> did you? <laughs> I didn't. Um, well, so there, there, there's many. Uh, I mean, some of the common ones that come to mind are uh, wood. Okay. You know, what's wood? Well, wood is made from cellulose, uh, largely. And so in that sense, you could argue that it's a polymer, but it's certainly uh, naturally derived. Uh, what about, uh, you know, tissue? And, you know, um, like skin or something like that. You know, again, it's a, it's a polymer. It's got some collagen fibers in it. Those are certainly, um, you could argue that they're polymers, um, naturally derived uh, again. Um, there's other things in them as well, and there's also important elements to the structure. You know, in wood, the grains run a certain way, and it gives different properties in different directions, and that's not really encompassed in this one, two, three classification scheme. And then, of course, there's also things like um, uh, composite materials. Carbon fiber clipboard I made with my third year students, and uh, you know this has got some. Um, fibers in a, in a epoxy matrix it makes it for a fairly light lightweight uh, you know, stiff and fairly strong uh, material but you know, how do we capture that and in that specific example you could probably argue that most of it's a polymer what about something like fiberglass we actually have glass fibers embedded in an epoxy matrix then you've got um, a blend of two and in fact that's really what that type of material called a composite is. It's a blend of two material classes. And then there's also things like, well actually let me capture that, composite. Okay, composites. And then what about things like semiconductors? You know, are they, I mean electrically, they can be insulating and, and conducting. Are they, are they metals? Are they ceramics? Um, <clears throat> so that, that's a, a material class that doesn't really fit those one, two, that one, two, three very well, but for a first order um, and, and a, introduction to, to these materials, I think it's a, it's a nice way of classifying the um, uh, the world, if you will, and, and uh, it works quite well. And certainly there are exceptions, and we can address some of those as we go, but I wanted to display that framework for how we might, uh, or how we're going to approach the, uh, the world of materials. Okay, thank you.